Hi, in this lecture we're going to talk about composition. Composition is simply where all the elements in a photograph sit, within the boundaries of the frame. In this image it's where is the house placed, where is the horse placed, or the fence placed, or even the bush on the left placed within the frame. And the whole purpose is so that your image looks visually appealing to not only yourself but to your viewer. To help you in composition there's a rule that's called the rule of thirds and it's like laying a grid on top of your image before you even take it. The rule of thirds breaks your image into, well, thirds. There's three sections horizontally and three sections vertically. If you imagine these lines being placed over your image before you actually snap the picture, the rule of thirds essentially says that the important elements, the elements in your picture that you want to stand out, they should line up or be close to one of the lines in the image, whether it's a vertical line or a horizontal line. These lines are to help you create visual appeal in your image. And if you look at this image, the horizon where the grass ends at the top, it runs along the bottom horizontal line. The tree, which is an important element to me, was in the left uh, third of the frame or runs along that left vertical line and the sky itself occupies the remaining two thirds of the frame. This is a rule of thirds image. This particular image actually lines up with uh, grid lines uh, and you can get these grid lines on your DSLR on your view screen of it or you can get it on the display of your smartphone or your point and shoot camera and it's there to aid you in lining up your image. What we're trying to do is take the essential elements of an image and place them in the different thirds of the frame. So here, even though the true horizon is the hills in the background, they go right through the center, which is not something that you want. You don't want a horizon in the center of your image, usually. Um, the actual element that I want that's important to me is the trees and the, the grass in the foreground. And the trees are in the bottom right third of the frame and the grass is in the bottom and towards the right of the frame. The sunrise is in the top left uh, third. It's in the top third and towards the left uh, line there. So that's another important element in my image. So that balances out the tree line and things. So we're essentially trying to fit the important elements into a visually appealing uh, setup by placing them in the different thirds of the frame. To me, the essential elements in this image that I took in Mexico is the gentleman in the foreground, the gentleman in the store, and the sign in the top right there that says Stray's Welcome. So the man in the foreground is basically in line with that left vertical line and his head is near the top horizontal line. And then the man in the store, he is in the top third of the frame. And the sign that says Stray's Welcome here is in the top right hand third of the image. So to me, all the essential elements are in the right thirds or the correct thirds of the frame. If I decided to crop this image, I can move this gentleman to the right hand vertical line. And if you notice, his eyes are intersecting that top horizontal line and he's on the right essentially looking into the left of the frame. He's looking right to left and looking into the frame and those are basic essential composition rules. So I can break those composition rules. Here I've moved the gentleman to the left. He's in line with that left vertical line. His eyes are still with that horizontal line at the top third and the way he breaks the rules a little bit more is that he's looking out of the image, out of the frame, instead of into the frame. And what that does is it creates some visual tension and to me it creates visual appeal. I like this. 
And remember that visual appeal is, is a subjective thing. It's all about whether you like it or not. And this image of my mother-in-law as we're out for a walk in Mexico and she's just goofing around. Um, the important elements, which is her mouth and her eyes, which express the joy and the fun that she's having that day, are all in the top third of the frame. And the secondary subject, which is the money sticking out of her clothing, is near the bottom third of the frame, intersecting that bottom line there. And the whole thing is centered. And this is an example of once you know the rules and once you're developing your eye of the photographer, you automatically line everything up. I had to line this up very quickly and almost instinctively to capture this image, which was very impulsive. This rule of thirds image is a little different in that although the vase or the vase, whatever you want to call it, is in the lower third of the frame, the flowers themselves are around the center of the frame. But if you really look at the whole image, the top part that were the above the flowers is one third. Then the flowers are one third, and then the vase is one third. So this is still a rule of thirds image. This image of a bicycle propped up uh, on the sidewalk I took in Acamal, Mexico, and it was a little bit more difficult to line up, but. To me, the bicycle was the most important element in the image, so it's in the bottom right hand third of the frame where that horizontal and vertical line intersect. And that to me gives it a lot more visual appeal. And just as a side note, all the images I've shown you so far in this lecture, I took with my iPhone. Here's another rule of thirds image where the photographer has been quite creative. Can you see without the lines how her eyes line up with that top one third horizontal line and how her body is being placed on the left one third of the frame. And also the photographer has added another creative element. If you notice on the right there's no subject matter, there's just some out of focus trees, it's just a bunch of space. That's called negative space and the photographers use that very creatively to create a feel. Here's another rule of thirds image where the, the vase and the plants is on the left third of the frame, the vase is in the bottom left and look at all that negative space on the right that the photographer has used to draw your attention to the subject matter itself. Here's a rule of thirds image where the subject is on the left and looking into the frame and then you have all that negative space on the right to enhance your subject. Very nice. And here's a rule of thirds image that I really like. The subject is on the right her face is on that right one third of the frame and all that negative space on the left and the subject is looking out of the frame. She's breaking that basic rule of composition and I really like this type of image. In these next few images, see where they may have used the rule of thirds and where they may have broken those rules to create some visual interest. So that's the rule of thirds and the use of negative space, like in this ball image. But another thing you might want to notice is when you're composing an image, you want to make sure that there's no distracting elements. If you look at this ball image, it's just the ball in the background. There's no uh, hands or feet or car wheels or anything like that in the image. It's just the ball and its background. In this composition, you'll notice that the photographer has made sure there's no distracting elements in the background. There's no tractors, there's no cars, there's no kids playing. Plus he's gotten down to the subject's eye level. And notice that rule of thirds where she's in that left third of the frame and the other two thirds on the right. 
He's using that creative thing called negative space. And he's also used another element that's called depth of field. You notice the background is a little bit more out of focus. It's like a soft focus. And we cover that in another lecture. So in this lecture on composition, we discuss the rule of thirds and how to use that creatively. We also discuss negative space and how to use that creatively and how to simplify your image so that your subject stands out to you and your viewer.